D tuning and some of the other open tunings on the guitar. Um, I'm in open D now, so the notes are D, A, D, F sharp, A, and D. So we have three Ds, two As, the root and the fifth of the scale. We have one third, it's on the third string, and F sharp. D, not E, but F sharp, not G, but A. Now we name the chord tones. And the first way to kind of understand this is to take a look at the harmonized scale. If we play a scale in sixths, which are inversions of thirds, um, you wind up with um, a harmonized scale that looks like this. We're going to play the fifth string and the third string. Just finger those two and let the rest of the guitar be droned. So this is a kind of an E7 kind of shape at two and one. And then the same shape at three and four. At the fifth fret, we're in a major chord, so we go five and five. Five and five at seven, again the eight and nine. Ten and ten, and twelve and twelve. So just fingering those two strings. Your right next salute finger is going to stay on the fifth string all the way up the neck. You're just going to alternate whether you're going to in one fret behind with your index finger on the third string or in the same fret with your ring finger. So it'll look like this. And going down, 12, 10, 9 and 8, 7 and 7, 5 and 5, 4 and 3. And one. Now, we can also fill in the fourth string, and when we do that, we raise the root of the chord. We're taking a, a D string and raising it up, and when we do that, we really hear the chords change. Instead of just the harmonized scale, we hear this. That comes from raising the root of the chord and giving us a real E minor chord. This would be D. This would be the E minor. F sharp minor. We're naming it after the note on the fourth string. A G major. 5 5 5. An A major. 7 7 7. 9 and 8. This is a diminished chord. It looks like sort of a first position D. Uh, you need a, a C sharp in that chord, so we're we're adding it on the on the uh, fourth string there at the eleventh fret, ten, eleven, ten, and then we've got it. So you have a D, a C sharp diminished, a B minor, an A, a G, an F sharp minor, an E minor, and a D. So we have all of the seven chords in just three fingerings. So it's a very efficient way. To use muscle memory. Um, now, if we can fret the, as we can, <laughs> the fifth string at the second fret and the fourth string at the second fret, well, there are three D strings, so I can fret any D string in the second fret. There are two A strings, I can fret any A string in the second fret. The only note that needs to either lag behind or move up for this to work for the first six chords in the scale uh, is the note on the third string. So all these chord forms are anchored on where the third of the chord is. When you're straight across at the nut, it's major, it's major, it's major. And when you're one fret behind, it's minor. So instead of this E shape here, we can take these two fingers and move them one string toward the ceiling, leaving the fourth string open instead of a drone at the bottom. have that bass note climb simply by moving these two fingers over one string toward the ceiling and you get this open chords are D, E minor, F sharp minor, G, A, 
B minor, C sharp diminished, and D. Now, you can use any note in the second fret, except on the third string, any note in the fourth fret, any note in the fifth fret or the seventh fret, those are our major chords, any note in the ninth fret, as long as the third is back, you wind up with the, with the minor chord. The diminished chord is a mess, you can sort that out, and then we're back at the octave. So we can invert these chords sort of muscle memory wise. Instead of putting these two fingers uh, closer to the ceiling for this E chord or this, we can move them down to the top four strings. Again, the third of the chord has to be back here on the third string, but the, but the chord itself, any note in the second fret, here, F sharp, minor, the G is straight across, A, same thing, you can leave the open A string, um, and then back to the minor, E minor, the diminished chord is <laughs> it's hard to do that one. <laughs> and then we're at the 12th fret. So the key thing to remember is you have these forms that are slanted for the minor chords and straight across the neck for the major chords. And the diminished chords sort of like a, a strange W up here. And so knowing that, you can play 6 and 3. You can play 5 and 3. Again, keeping an eye on where the C sharp is going to be to get that diminished chord up here at the 12, 11 to 12 frets. So in the top three strings of the guitar, we have this. We're naming these chords after the note on the first string, identifying them by that note. So this is D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. One, two, two. F sharp minor, G, A, B minor, C sharp diminished, and D. So we have this lovely sort of Mexican sixth. Hard times come again no more is driven out of these sort of forms. Knowing that we've got these slanted forms at the, for the minor chords and the straight across the neck forms for the major chords. Mm -hmm.